Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy Cups the Universe, a.k.a. Petey Mossberg, a.k.a. Poet Lounge. And we are back with uh, another, hmm, marvelous conversation, extraordinary ponderation, all right? Now, everybody, you know, I like law. I like law a lot. And I like to keep my eyes and ears open to law. And I've been learning a lot of law. Now, case law is a big law that everybody loves to use because for some reason, it's the most restrictive law because it's based on case. So if it was bias or prejudice in there, then basically if it walked, that case would still walk in the favor of whoever won the case and be used like such, right? Now, I'm preferably one more for state state law, you know what I'm saying? Um, commerce law, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, basically a uh, constitution or U.S. code, right? So I feel like if you argue cases with those, you can't, you can't lose, right? I mean, obviously, it'd be straightforward and to the point. But... Um, I want us to I want us to look at this clip of this lawyer, right? And he's going to be discussing how um basically a form of star- sovereignty and the form of sovereignty which would obviously be probably one of the lower forms, right? Cuz you know the people are the first sovereign, then the so-called kings and monarchs. Then and then like the and which is it also includes like the government too in that. Like they have lesser powers, right? And then it'd be like the state itself. You see what I'm saying? So this is going to be discussing like the state sovereignty. And if a state has an issue with another state. Now pay attention because honestly, if somebody masters this argument or masters arguments in this fashion, it can still be used. You know what I'm saying? All of them can be used to the right um, practitioner. So uh, let's just check it out real quick and um, we'll be right back and I'll uh, tell you why. I feel like this person, even though he sounds like he's there to help, he sounds, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to show you one reason in the whole conversation he has that takes all of what he said and basically just like flips it on his head, makes you realize how non-legal things really are in society. You understand what I'm saying? So without further ado, here we go. So the last answer, and this is probably the most important for certainly for constitutional law purposes, is a 1908 Supreme Court decision created exception called Ex Parte Young. Uh, Edward Young uh, was the attorney general of the state of Minnesota charged with enforcing allegedly unconstitutional railroad state railroad regulations. And uh, and they couldn't the railroads couldn't sue the state because of the 11th Amendment, but they thought, maybe we can sue Young, and so they did. So they filed suit against Young, seeking an injunction, a court order, a federal court order to him to stop enforcing these unconstitutional state laws. And the Supreme Court took that and thought, you know, we really haven't left folks many ways, many ways, of challenging unconstitutional action by states. So... So let's let's go with this. And the ex parte young rule since 1908 has been the principal mechanism for filing constitutional claims against state governments that you believe have violated your constitutional rights. You can't sue the state. You can't sue for money, but you can sue a state official for an injunction to get him or her to stop enforcing what you to believe believe to be an unconstitutional uh, an unconstitutional state act. Thank you. That applies to the state, as you heard. Um, that's why you have to go that way. The injunction, you know what I'm saying, against the state to stop the state from doing unconstitutional acts, right? Um, I have a few problems with the language. I guess because it's the state, it stands like that. But when it comes to the people, it's a different story. And here's a reason why. If you notice him, he said a lot of um, things of the nature of you can't sue the state 
you can't get the money, but you know, you can file an injunction to stop a state official from um, you know, passing any uh unconstitutional state acts, which then, you know, pass into law and all that. Um, he also said, um, well, let's tackle this one first and we're gonna tackle the next thing he said. But um, so what is the problem that I have with what he's saying? Um, there's English, then there's legal English, and then there's lawful English. A lot of people don't realize that words don't mean what they think they mean, but people don't tell them that. So the words mean what they think they mean, but when you try to use them in a context as uh, representing your natural rights, you have to say it perfectly. It's like a puzzle. So, you know, let me show you why I said I have a problem with what he said. Mind you, he said, you can't sue the state. You can't sue for monies. But you, you see what I'm saying, can cause this injunction to stop the the act of the con illegal constitution. Now, this is based off of a, a state case, a state law. Of course, most lawyers only know state law, right? I didn't even go to school and I, I might as well have a master's in law now somewhere. But um, so let me show you what I was talking about. Source 50 CFR 25-12. You, you means the public. Source 20 CFR 422-402. You. You means an individual who owes a debt to the United States within the scope of this subpart. Scoping language, none. So that was the ex parte Young rule since 1908. And if you, if you pay attention to what it is, principal mechanism for filing constitutional claims against state governments that you... Now, the you means an individual that owes a debt to the United States under the scope of 20 CRF. Edward, Edward Young was an attorney general of the state of Minnesota. He was charged with enforcing unconstitutional railroad regulations. But the lawyer, notice how the lawyer said allegedly charged. But the rule that's in place since 1908 is basically used is the is the principal mechanism hmm the states hid behind the constitution the, the 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 11th amendment so they had to sue the young guy the attorney general had to be sued because the people that was trying to build the railroads couldn't sue the state of Minnesota for those unconstitutional regulations. Now, don't that sound familiar? I, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I feel like I'm living in a world right now where there are a lot of unconstitutional regulations floating around. But this case law still has its flukes because we know some judges can prolong cases. Some judges don't want to offend friends that might be opposing the defense of whoever's using it, right? It's a lot of little tricky things when it comes to the law, the politics of it. But... At the end of the day, truthfully speaking, to sign that is to give away your true sovereignty rights. And your true sovereign rights, because remember, sovereignty is to the people first.
then the monarchs and the little governments, and then the states. But in actuality, the state is actually supposed to be higher than, and I'm gonna do another video explaining what I'm about to explain, but I'm not gonna go into it right now. So, when you sign this contract, <laughs> because it says this is the only principal mechanism for you to file, and shout out to my sovereign brother, man. He know who he is. I don't got to say his name. He hit me up the other day and he was hitting me. He was speaking on certain things and he mentioned this. So it was, it was funny about the contract that I ran into this guy. And in filing, and this being the main, the principle, right? Now, we're going to dissect that word in the other video that I'm going to do. But it's so funny. I might do that one next because it goes together. But basically, the principal mechanism of filing a constitutional complaint, basically a federal court order, to, in, which is an injunction, to stop, you know what I'm saying, said activities or whatever. And, and, and in you filing, you're contracting. And what's the contracting is the consent. So the consent of what? Of you claiming to be you. Now, what do I mean when I say that? By you saying that you are a person or individual that is in debt to the United States. And that's why it says you can't get money and stuff like that, but you can get them to stop doing said activity. This is why I say law is tricky. And um, even though this man is trying to be helpful, he's actually an agent. <laughs> we learned today, we learned what an agent is, like when they were in action, they look like, you know, they help him. But under the, let's say behind the veil, the truth of it isn't helping. Uh, we also learned that if you do go that route, because everything is, and remember, consent is not like you sign something and then your consent is there forever. Consent is like the moment you choose to not consent to something, it's done. Think about a female that says she consents to, to have a, a sexual encounter with a male. And she goes all the way as far as up to being naked with him and kissing with him. And for some reason, she says, you know, look, you know what? I don't want to do this no longer. That means she no longer consents. In that very moment, you no longer have the right to go forward. If you was to go forward after she stopped consenting, it would be considered rape. It would be a crime against the person. You see what I'm saying? So... You got to look at the whole situation in that aspect with, with, with this lawyer, you know, he's with, with your consent to anything is like how that female in that example, basically, you know, she has the right to stop at any moment. Even if you, the guy, she consents up into entry, but if she says, nah, stop, as soon as she says word stop, that's non-consent. So when a person consents to this situation, right, to injuncting, not the state, because you can't do the state according to this regulation or according to this procedure, right? If you filing, and, 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 and like my bro told me, not sub submitting. You see what I'm saying? So if you're doing it this way for the injunction, in such and such, which is by no means, I'm not saying, can't probably work wonders, especially right now. You see what I'm saying? Because if you can't sue the state, then you sue the official. So the attorney general was the one that got sued instead of Minnesota based on the unconstitutional regulations toward the business that they was trying to provide. It made it impossible for them to continue doing their business. They couldn't sue the state, so they had to sue the person. So in, 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 in retrospect, that would be like today, 
Second Amendment people saying, okay, we're not going to sue the state. We're going to sue the actual person. So we suing Biden or we suing Carmella. See, now they got things in play where it's like you can't sue with this. But you got to, like, like I said, you see him now, now, now. See how I just exposed the way he exposed himself. But if you're not privy to catch it, you wouldn't even see the exposure. You figured he was giving you the right way to do something. By you filing that, which would make that a contract, you would be consenting to being you. Where he said, you can't sue the state. You can't sue for money. But you can get an injunction. As the public and as the public, as an individual that owes the United States corporation. You see what I'm saying? So as a sovereign, and for all a sovereign salute, I realize sovereigns and sovereignty is whatever they're interested in. It's like a, it's like a nation. It's like a country. You know what I'm saying? Different people, without knowing it, do different shit, and they get good at different things. You know what I'm saying? And that's like a city having farmers, bankers, uh, uh, construction workers, having a variety of different industries that can create an ecosystem of humanity so that that place is thriving at its highest capacity and its most comfortable and convenient capacity. See what I'm saying? So I wanted to do that for my brothers. In a sovereign state of mind, that whole situation is obsolete and you go by what the words really mean and you don't play now, the system don't like that because the system is not used to seeing that in action. And if so, they're not used to people like us, the bros, really using it, melanated beings. And then they're not used to us being able to be free about it because they feel like power is something you got to hide. And power is actually something you release. That's, you, you power everything else. You know what I'm saying? That's power. So, you know, I wanted to express this in this video to just get that across. That when you look at paperwork, when lawyers talk to you, even when judges talk to you and, and, and stuff, the words that they say out their mouth is very precise. And what you think they mean when they say something may not be what you think they mean. One, two, if you're not on a super sovereign level, like a couple of brothers I know and a couple of people I watch on YouTube and everybody seems to get that energy themselves and they go their route, right? So if you're not on a sovereign route and you're still in a matrix route, you still, you know, uh, you're federal, see, I'm a, <laughs> your state, right? Whatever the case may be. You're public official, right? Right? Because of the oath, right? So, you know, for them, you will have to go the route of the injunctions if you're not a super sovereign and, and be able to hold that. Because like I said, it's like a puzzle. When you say the words, it have to be perfect. You have to know the meaning of everything you say and don't get slipped up. Once they see you don't know the meaning of a word, they got you, they get you, you done. You see what I'm saying? But if you want to, like, stop unconstitutional regulations against anything, you go, you go the route of injunctions, right, as far as being in the matrix, not, not a lot of people are outside of the matrix, especially legally. And I'm not saying just detached from the system. I mean, like, like they are the system. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it, I can't explain it no better than that. Um, Basically, you see now that the world is made to lie to you without lying to you. They lie to you without telling you you're being lied to. So now, listen. With these meanings of these words, in my opinion, in a sovereign, in a chief justice of law, sovereign opinion, right? Because I don't need none of them to tell me that because they're not, they're all foreign to me. And I don't mean foreign like, I mean, the powers are foreign to me. So, you know, with that being said, not what they want you to see. This is not what they want you to understand. This is not what they want you to get. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of times you limit yourself. Now, remember, there's levels to this. Now, you don't have to go through the law. You don't have to go through the Rex Lex. Well, Rex Lex, yeah, one is right, one is left. Like my brother, um, you know, Seven Beaumont, shout out to him, man. I learned a lot from him, man. 
keep it real. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I knew a lot. I was reminded of a lot from him. And I was able to bounce, you know what I'm saying, build with him. There's a lot of others, too, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to all y'all. But a lot of this comes from me, too. You know what I'm saying? My perspective, my experience in life. But I just want y'all to understand that, you know what I'm saying? This man was speaking. This man was speaking. And he was trying to help. He was speaking on sovereignty. But he was very misleading. Because, because that conversation was a snippet of a bigger conversation dealing with sovereignty. That was misleading. Now, if that was just like case case law study 101, uh, how to prevent such and such, I might have gave him respect more because I'd have been like, okay, I understand that you may not understand the wordage that you're using, but you mean well. But because he said it's a sovereign conversation and he spoke like that and such, and I had to just show you in one word. Now, mind you, that's just one word. You is just one word. You get, a, you get a document from them, you need to find the real meaning of every word on that page. And when you read it back, it's not even going to sound the way you, you read it when you didn't have understanding. So, all right, so that's your boy, Cups the Universe, a.k.a. Petey Mossberg, a.k.a. Polar Lounge, and I just wanted to kick it with y'all. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to drop that with y'all, some wisdom and some jewels, you know what I'm saying, for the extraordinary ponderation. You know what I'm saying? I haven't done it in a while, and I mean, it's not super formal. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't you know what I mean? It's formal, but it ain't like I'm... Hmm, you know, I ain't do all that, but at the end of the day, you know, love is love, love for always, always will be love, forever love, you know what I'm saying, and um, yeah, man, I want to see everybody prosper, everybody live good, feel good, now, I know everything ain't good, but that don't mean you don't got to see it as that, if you can't change it, don't stress it, if you can change it, change it, if you can change it and you don't change it, you can't blame nobody else but yourself, and that's those prayers of serenity, but see, when you apply it to yourself, it means so much more. So, yo, it's your boy. I'm out. One love. Peace.